and you're going to have to fight tough enemies. The gore in this is a little less somehow. Maybe the sensors got ticked off. The gameplay overall is about the same. So is the fighting, although you're now fighting more people, and sometimes several at the same time. In fact, there's one or two spots in this game where if you're not really careful, you'll wind up with an enemy on either side of you. And this game doesn't let you turn around to face the other side just like that. Like in the first one, if you somehow move towards an enemy, you can pass each other. However, if you're that close and he then decides to strike you, yeah. But yeah, you're still running around, dodging traps, maneuvering, figuring out how to go somewhere and then making the considerable effort to actually go there. I don't know what it is about it, but the gameplay just is not as addictive as it was in the first one. Part of it might be that the prince now handles like a freaking mech. I don't know what he's been eating, but he's really heavy to run with, to jump with. I don't know why they thought this was a good idea, if they did, or if it was just some side effect of something else they did with the game. I would compare it to how it is in the Hercules game, although why you want to play that game out of your own free will, I have no idea. I mean, he basically isn't slower, he just handles slower. You can still run, you can still make running jumps, but you now have to really hold the key down. And he'll gradually decide, and then he'll start moving. Each new location gives you new enemies to fight. Most of them are human in appearance and shape, but you also get to slay some venomous snakes, and these disembodied witch heads that are really, really frustrating. Obviously you can't parry either of those, it's all a matter of timing. Especially horrible with the witch heads, because those take several blows. And sometimes you fight more than one in the same bout. Yeah. Oh, and if you're wondering how the disembodied heads get around, they fly. The graphics are better, there's a lot more detail. The Prince now spends the game with a turban, with a proper, what some might call a gaudy dress or whatever they're called. In this one, the end boss fight is okay. It's a little bit odd, and I'm not sure I'd really say it's necessarily that much of a challenge. It's essentially a puzzle you have to solve. This game is very challenging, and there are definitely pull out your hair frustrating moments, more so than in the first one. With that said, it is also pretty satisfying, and with fairly few exceptions, it plays fair. You know, it doesn't trick you into doing something and then right after have an instant death trap or something. Overall, I do recommend it. If you love the first one and you want more, this definitely is it. It doesn't betray what the first one was. It expands on it, forgetting to adjust some things along the way, like the time limit. And overall, it feels like a pretty good sequel. It adds backstory for the prince, who still does And there's a sense of continuity. Stuff that was in the first one appears here as well. It works as a follow-up. It also really effectively sets up a sequel that I'm not sure it's been made yet. The very ending is very much a sequel bait, and I don't think that plot thread has ever been picked up. Especially with the new trilogy completely disavowing all knowledge of these three. And that brings me to Prince of Persia 3D. As you can maybe tell if you've played the second game, the prince's appearance really hasn't changed. He's still wearing the turban and whatever they call that clothing he wears. I'll get back to that. This time, the Grand Vizier is gone. Now, the Sultan, the prince, and the princess are visiting the Sultan's brother in the neighboring kingdom. Sultandom? 
whatever. Or, I don't know if it's neighboring or not. Whatever. At first, everything seems all well and good. Then a dancing girl who you would swear at first looks like she has a sword through her head. She doesn't. She is carrying it on something, somehow. Kills the Sultan's guards. The princess is denied access. The prince is dragged away. And all throughout this, the Sultan's brother is sitting there, puffing on his hookah, looking a bit like Jabba the Hutt. The prince is thrown into a dungeon, which he must now find his way out of, in order to save the life of the princess. And no, I swear I am talking about the third one, not the first one. The reason all this is happening is that the Sultan promised his brother that the brother's son would marry the princess. Which is incest. That's disgusting. Said son also has a lion's head, which kind of makes me wonder if his very first meal was the doctor who delivered him. Tony the Tiger Face's name is Rugnor. Now, by this point, games were being made in 3D. This is around 98-99. The first Tomb Raider came out in 1996. This is very similar to it. So what exactly did they do to smooth out the transition from 2D to 3D? Almost nothing. And that's one of the key problems here. The gameplay tries to be just about exactly the same. You're still climbing up several platforms. There are traps you have to avoid. And like before, some of the traps you can more or less clearly tell and you just have to find a way to not wind up there. And some of them are quite hidden. The worst example of this perhaps is the one that lops your head off bloodlessly for some reason. I guess censorship. If you don't crawl under it. Crawling really isn't used for anything else. Now that same trap was in the second one, but in that the crawling was much more intuitive and smooth. Here it's almost like you're suddenly asking your Delta Force member to fly over a canyon. It feels out of place. Now I've by now already mentioned two things that this gets right from the second game. And that's again part of the issue here. This is so much like the first two. The first one was completely different from almost all of its contemporaries. The second one built on that and had relatively little other than the very core gameplay elements be the same. Still jumping, still climbing platforms, still avoiding traps, same health system and still mostly fighting humanoid creatures. But other than that, all of the traps are new and different. Same for the locations. There is no real prison in the second game. The third one starts in the prison, and then you start doing what you did in the second one, which is travel around the world. For some reason. I don't know, maybe the prince just really reverts to this selfish desire to see everything in the world whenever the princess is away, I can't explain it. And you are again flown from place to place in the same way, in fact. Another problem is that where the second one was maybe slower in the handling, this one is just plain slow. In the first two, it takes about a fraction of a second to climb a platform. In this one, two, maybe three full seconds. Or that's what it feels like, at least. And you'll be about ready to cuss out the prince when you see him drag his weapon as slowly and showingly as possible, when the enemy is just standing there ready to strike. The fighting system is another lamentable aspect of this. Let me commend them on their clearly good intentions first. 
this was in fact an aspect where they didn't just ride on the nostalgia factor of the first two, 